Hi everyone, today is Sunday, July 8th, 2018, and this is the Duel Assessment, your podcast for UU Duel Links. My name is Green Ranger. And I'm Deck Tech. And this week, we saw some cool new things, the return of special duels. We're going to talk a little bit about those. It's a new way to play PvP. And in the past, we had other special duels, but we like this one quite a bit. And, of course, they dropped news on us on Friday of a new box, Burning Nova. So we're going to go over all those cards. And Cyrus is back as well. And a new season of Ranked Duels and a bunch of other new cards. So, so many new cards in so little time. Deck Tech, where are you in this madness? Uh, yeah, definitely madness. I actually maxed out my gems and my blue uh, orbs. Your rare orbs, and my, right? Yeah, yeah. The, Same time. Or, well, no, I did the dual orbs and the rare jewels and the keys all at the same time. So it's a different kind of madness over here. Obviously, the keys, I just went to the trader and traded for a bunch of colored keys. So the uh, generic keys didn't, I mean, whatever. But I had to use some of the dual orbs. I ended up making a shiny card with the uh, rare jewels. Like, I have, I've almost maxed out my storage on uh, the gems. And that's, of course, because I... I skipped on the last box. Um, we kind of talked about maybe a little bit more of like trading off on which ones we're in charge of as a result, like because we can't kind of keep up with everything as well as we'd like. So I decided to skip the last one. And then, uh, so now I had just like way too many. And I don't like the way that they make you manage it where you have you have to use them after a certain amount of time. They only last for 30 days once you've reached that cap. Um, so if there were not a box coming out, then I would be forced to use these. But they do release a box close to uh, every 30 days anyway, so I think that's kind of, I guess, their protection against uh, having them be destroyed that way. But I still don't love it that you can't bank very many, especially considering that 10,000 isn't a huge amount since each... Uh, pack costs 50 and sometimes you need to buy through a big set three times so i don't know it's not complaint time it's how's your week going time so uh so far it's going a little bit weird uh and uh that's mostly it i haven't really had time to play much pvp either the regular one or the special duels so uh we talked about it before i've only played literally nine games because i did two special duels and then i did seven pvp games to clear out my uh Stamp. My stamp thing, yeah, for this event to get a couple of rewards from that. So, how about you? Where are you at? Yeah, so like, similarly in the resource department, I've got too many rare jewels, but I forgot how to use them, so thanks for reminding me of getting a shiny card. Um, <laughs> That's right. In regular ranked, I played this week. I got to plat 4 because I started at plat 1, and then went back to plat 4. I plat 1. Uh, I just suck at fur hires. That's. I regret buying that box because I suck at playing them, so that's what happened. And then um, the special duels came around, and I had an idea of making this uh, Ancient Gears deck, which uh, I only have four King of Games, and two of them were of Ancient Gears, so it was naturally for me to go back to them. And I made my own deck, and I got King of Games in two days. Um, so it was nice reliving the re- nostalgia of Gold 3 to King of Games. There's no plat. 1 to 5 and no legend 1 to 3 in the way so um, and also facing a new meta is a bit refreshing in facing these handicap decks and more character driven decks I guess so pretty fun yeah. to do nice yeah that's a, that's a good job you pointed out that it's quicker right to get the uh, king of games in this new system so yeah. that's, some, had, that's something we'll talk about I know when I had a win streak, I only had to win one each time. So from rookie to bronze, I think even some silvers, I just won one game. And silvers might have been two, but king of from gold three to king of games, I mean, each gold was three wins in a row, I believe. Some of them were two out of three, I believe, but gold three to king of games, I just had to win three. So um, that's easier than like the four out of five or the five out of six that is normally in ranked. Yeah. Nice. I don't know why we never got King of Games back then. Like, it seems so easy to get it. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, sucked? I don't know. Yeah. 
happens. We played. I played Victory Viper back then, so I could I could play him that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean we got a couple. Right? I got King of Games. You got it before me, like, way way before me. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, go to the fir- the only esports event this week documented is the Duelinx Meta Weekly Twenty Seven, and they have a new double elimination format. So you don't have to win all your games. First place, Belial. Yeah. Yep, go ahead. Oh, that, I was just going to say, it's uh, it's interesting because they, I mean, they're just kind of really reforming the the whole format. They best of one Swiss until top four with no deck list requirement. Um, in, once you're in top four, it's a best of three single elimination. So... Uh, double elimination until the top 32. At top 32, it becomes single elimination with best of one still. And then uh, once they go to top four, it's a best of three single elimination. Um, and you can only have one deck with a five-card side deck. Once you get in the top four, they, I guess that's when they kind of make you lock something in. So it's really just a... I like that they're still trying out various different formats, trying to figure out what they like best both for viewers and the players, I'm sure. So it's all very interesting. Yeah, I know DK does a lot of research about what uh, Magic or Hearthstone does, and he tries to emulate that for this. So there's a lot of thought behind it instead of just randomly thinking of stuff to do. So it's a lot that goes into it. Um, Nice. First place, Belial, the Lord of Lies. (laughs) The tie that binds for hire... This is a new version, 21 cards. There's only two Donpo. You typically see three of those. And there is a Monster Gate, which you normally don't see in this deck. Yeah, I like the Monster Gate. It's fun and techy. Because one of the issues for hires is that once you uh, fill up all three of your slots, uh, you it becomes a little bit weaker because kind of the strength of the deck is that when you... Uh, special summon the for hires, or whenever you summon them, I think, uh, you just get a benefit from the ones that are already out. And so, since we only have three monster slots, they can get some pretty powerful stuff out. I mean, they have uh, Dinah, who's got 2,500. They've got Wiz, who has uh, 2,800 defense. So, you know, they've got some solid dudes out, but they're locked into, like, they're limited to just those at that point. And so that's why you have, he's got two Econs. Uh, sometimes you'll Tribute Summon one of your big guys to make a little bit of room. But using the Monster Gate as another way to do it is also fun. I like that. Second place, negative one. Beat down Mast Heroes seems to be their go-to skill now. Uh, not much to say about this deck at all. It's uh, It's got Super Rush Headlong in the sideboard. That's a card we haven't seen in quite a bit of time, I guess. Yeah, and a straight flush, which is, you know, in and out. Um, but yeah, I agree. Otherwise, it looks pretty much like the type of, you know, uh, mass heroes that we're used to seeing. So Yeah, three three Chalice, I guess, instead of one, two and one Treacherous. That's all the for hires, I guess. Something. Yeah. Which is interesting, because Treacherous is okay versus them as well. Sometimes it's worse, sometimes it's better. But... Yeah. Cool. Uh, third place, Nog, also beat down Mast Hero. This one has Drill Darks instead of the Ciders, which I think is like a for hire thing. Uh, tech against for hires. Not much to say other than that as well. Yeah, a little bit of a different uh, magic and uh, trap composition. Uh, is does go back to the two treacherous trap hole, uh, one polymerization instead of two. So uh, a little bit of a different look, but fundamentally the same deck and nothing that's going to kind of blow your mind or anything. And Serpy, also third place, uh, Draw Sense Earth Spellbooks with 22 cards. We've seen Draw Sense Earth before, and that only gets you the Fool. So I guess the Fool is pretty important. And 22 cards. So there's no Silent Magician package here as well. Right, yeah. This is funny because when we first saw Draw Sense Earth, it was right before the Silent Magician came out. And so I remember you you wrote something in the deck description as 
uh, the last time we're going to see Jaws Sunstar. Right. And then my response was, and also the first time. Like, I didn't remember ever seeing it prior to that. But apparently it was a thing and still is a thing. Um, perhaps this person just doesn't have the Silent Magicians, but we're not going to assume that. Um, obviously, it did very well, and it might well still be a very viable option. So that's cool and good to know, especially uh, if you don't feel like spending you know, your real-life money on this game. Yep. All right, so that's it. We're going to talk about Special Duel Season 3. This time you need... It, there's a requirement of being a legendary duelist, so each character has a couple of uh, deck building restri- restrictions. So you have to play. I believe all the skills are um, they're restricted to the character. Like you can't play balance because so many p- characters have balance. So they're only the skills that are unique to the character, and you have to play core cards. There are certain cards you have to have, and then you need to pick like there's like a menu. You pick like two out of how many ever cards you also have to have put in your deck, I believe. Yeah, I don't think it's quite, you know, just the unique skills. I'm pretty sure Kaiba has beat down, even though a couple other characters have it too. But it's the ones that, like, um, you know, have the, the character's flavor or identity to them. Uh, beat down for so long, Kaiba was the only one with beat down that it feels like a Kaiba skill, even though other characters now have it as well. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely some... The whole point is to kind of get this character flavor and identity going for them all. It's a bit of a throwback, which is fun. Yep. Uh, some of the better ones we've seen, Arcana and Yugi with Dark Magician ones. I've seen the Arcana one quite a bit, actually. The Joey, Last Gamble, Red Eyes, Crowler, Ancient Gears. Yugi has Silent Magician and Access Denied Gandora. And Pegasus has Relinquish, which I have faced as well. And you, did you play that deck? No, I ended up just playing... (laughs) So when I went into my decks, I had like three decks that were already in compliance with these rules, which is funny, but they were just kind of things that I had around. Um, It ended up being a Dark Magician one. It wasn't the best version of Dark Magician, though, so I won one game and lost one. But um, once I actually like sit down and get a chance to really play it, I will likely um, build just something a little bit better. And I, I did see a bunch of players not use a skill and play Fur Hires or Amazonas. Um, that's pretty common, and that's something I did back then with the Exodia duels. I just played Gravekeepers, I believe. That, that was meta back then, so people were just running the meta decks, too. Yeah, that's a bit of a bummer. I didn't realize you could do that when I was looking at it. Um so that's that's unfortunate because it would have been more fun. I, I had the same complaint with uh, with the Esper Robo event where it would have been more fun if they kind of like made people participate. <laughs> yeah. But but you know whatever. So let's talk about the like how it is in general. I guess you saw a cool Crystal Beast deck you mentioned. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I was talking about it before. I uh, it was I I didn't even know what was happening to be fair like there to be honest because i played so little crystal beast i only did it to do like the quest that was part of the crystal beast event to get whatever it was a uh, 50 or 100 gems or something um so a couple of the cards and and he used the skill where i guess he got to Trent shuffle cards crystals. back and yeah yeah uh yeah right yeah and then all of a sudden uh i was dead and i was like okay cool you know, that was dope. I don't know what happened, but I applaud you for it. Um, and then the other thing that I faced was just an Ancient Gears deck. It was pretty standard, um, but I was able to just overcome it because it was a normal deck and I knew what it was doing and I um, played around that. <laughs> yeah. So. How about you? You're the one who's played a lot. Yeah. Uh, not, it, it actually wasn't a ton. I mean, it was just me playing the games and they were fast and... Uh... It kind of took over my regular PvP time, and I just got King of Games, because it was pretty easy. Um, so I built my own Ancient Gears deck. I, I mean, before, I was looking at all the characters and what they required. Obviously, if they forced you to play a card that sucked, like, let's say let's say Bones, you have to play the Pumpkin. Like, who's going to play a 1 Tribute 1800? So I was like, you, know, you, have, you have to rule out certain characters. So Right, yeah. Crowler needs you to play Ancient Gear Golem, which is a good card, which I liked. Uh, my history, so 
That's what I did. So to build the deck, you need two other cards. And these cards aren't that good. So it's not like Ancient Gear Knight. You know, you obviously put that card in. But I picked a Ancient Gear, another Ancient Gear Castle. So along with the skill which gives you one, you get another one. Which is a, it's a win more card. It gives... It does give an extra 300, and it lets you use two Ancient Gear Golems, so I thought to put that in. And an Ancient Gear Workshop, which is a card you don't see, but it's basically you you add one Ancient Gear from your graveyard into your hand, which I don't think is a bad card. It's just not good enough for ranked. So that's the one yeah. I picked. Um, to build the deck, I put another Ancient Gear Golem, three Knights, three Sergeant Electro, one Ancient Gear Soldier, and those are all my monsters. And then um, I had the castle, as I mentioned, the workshop, two chalice, and those are all my magic cards. For for traps, I had a lot of traps. I just put in my best traps. I had widespread ruin. I had floodgate, Paleozoic Canadia, two pulse mines, two wall of D. And if I'm missing something, I I'm sorry, but I think that that's my whole deck. <laughs> um, <laughs> basically, I just put in my best traps, and the way it was. Because I had a castle and sometimes another castle, I had a lot of traps in my hand. So a, a better a better deck builder might have put less traps, but I figured let's just go with my best cards, my best trap cards, and specifically ones to counter for higher. So that's why the Floodgate, Paleozoic, and two um, Chalice were in my deck, and it worked out. So I did lose a few to prevent me from winning all my games, but... It was enough to win almost all my games and have a big win streak from rookie three to gold two. So from bronze and silver, I did not lose at all. So pretty good. Uh, Ancient Gears, I totally recommend for ganking games in special duels. Yeah, nice. That's uh, It sounds like the classic deck from last time you got king of games with it in like normal duels and, and that I also had a lot of success with. So seems like it'd be really good. Yeah, we, we did. I think I got two King of Games. The first one, the first one looks like this because I actually had an Ancient Gear Soldier, which is a thirteen hundred, which kind of which sounds kind of dumb, but it was in my deck. And the second one was the one we played around where we flipped stuff into defense mode and like tragedy and uh, Sasuke and stuff like that. That was a fancier mm-hmm. one, but this was more like the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yep. It's a it's a great way to get those ranked uh ranked tickets if you don't like regular PvP. It's definitely a really good time to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's always nice to kind of shake things up. Um, I would say if you're tired of, like, the fur hires and stuff, then you come here, but I guess that's not really the case, so uh, that's kind of a bummer, but still it's fun to have, like, that different take on things, and especially if you're playing this game for the nostalgia purpose, with that, which I think a lot of the early players of this game were. Um, a lot of people, when we started playing... It it kind of go, harkens back to that original nostalgic feel, and that's kind of cool too. Yep, for sure. So definitely check it out. Um, standard duelist multiplier. So now you could fight up to one to one, two, or three standard duelists. You fight only one person, but your awards multiply. So your experience, your duel assessment, your rewards all multiply two or three. You're still capped to eight rewards per game, though. So it depends what you're trying to get out of the triple multiplier, I guess. Uh, so you could do them at twos or threes. It's up to you, I guess. But it's only against standard duelists. Yeah. I was thinking, for me, it's uh, less relevant because in my normal like day-to-day life, I've talked about it before, but um, I can kind of just have some auto duels going in the background while I'm doing my work. So I usually don't need to kind of power through my standard duelists. Um, But for people who don't have that ability, who, you know, want to do all their games during their break or whatever, this seems like a a great way to kind of more efficiently do it uh, time-wise at a slight cost to reward since you're capped at eight still. So, you know, for some people, that's definitely worth it. For others, not so much. I'm glad they're adding the option. Yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah. So, we're going to talk about the new box set now. Burning Nova, it's coming out today. Today's July 8th. It's going to come probably uh, nine hours from now. Eight or nine hours, I'd, I'd estimate. 
that's typically around the time it comes out, like 8 Eastern, 8 p.m. Eastern, so, um, or 7, I forget, but it's coming out soon, TM, <laughs> and we're going to talk about the cards. Yeah. So, URs cool. and SRs first. Yeah, so uh, I took a look at the URs, so I'll start it off. Uh, the first one in the list that we have uh, on the official website for it is Elemental Hero Nova Master. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight star fusion. Uh, the materials are an Elemental Hero Monster and a Fire Monster. And uh, 2600, 2100. And it reads, must be fusion summoned and cannot be special summoned other ways. If this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, draw one card. And uh, my thoughts on this are, it seems kind of underwhelming. Uh, one fire monster is obviously a lot of utility, so uh, there might be something there. But 2600, uh, when it kills something, it draws one card. Is like, that would just be a normal tribute summon for it to be in discussion these days. So... Like just a one tribute monster with those stats and that ability, we still might not even play. So I don't know. This seems a little pricey to me. I don't think it's going to see a ton of play, if any. Yeah, elements of heroes are just underwhelming as a whole. Maybe if you do something with the Jaden skill where you get extra thousand attack. I don't know. Not really. Worth yeah. It. Yeah. Uh, the next one, Battery Man Industrial Strength. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, star monster, uh, light, thunder, 2600 attack, zero defense. And it reads, this card cannot be normal summoned or set. This card cannot be special summoned except by removing from play two battery man monsters from your graveyard. Once per turn, you can remove one, remove from play one thunder type monster from your graveyard to destroy one monster and one spell or trap card on the field. So... The Battery Mans, we're going to talk about the archetype. It's one of the sub-archetypes in the set. But uh, they are, I'm pretty sure they're all uh, Thunder. They they should be all Thunder. Um, <laughs> and so this is kind of saying, uh, for the summon ability, it needs to be very specifically Battery Man. Uh, for the secondary ability, you can use the Battery Man cards as well. But also, maybe you can... Um, you can use some other thunder types if you yeah, happen support, to have them. There's support monsters. Yeah, okay, some support monsters. Um, there's also a thunder dragon, maybe. Uh, so, anyway. Uh, at first, I was really excited about this card because I was thinking like it has some cool synergies with Grass Looks Greener, and uh, unfortunately, we're going to talk about it, like I said, below or later, but the Battery Man, the rest of the cards don't seem that good to me. So my excitement for this card waned as I got uh, farther down in the set. How about you? What are you thinking about it? Yeah, I didn't realize it destroyed two cards, so it, it looks better than I thought it was. But um, I thought it was just one card, like destroy yeah. one card. But yeah, sa same thing. At first I was not impressed with it, just because the, the support monsters aren't that good. Yeah, the cost to play it is that you have to play the other Battery Man cards, and they're not, they're probably not good enough. I mean, you never rule anything out in this game, but uh, unfortunate there. Yeah. All right, the next one uh, Celestia, Light Sworn Angel, five star uh, Light Fairy. The Light Sworn were an archetype that uh, was first presented to us in a, an older set. I forget which one. Abyss, right? Uh, hmm? Abyss Rising? Uh, maybe. I'll yeah. take your word for it. Or I could just look it up right now. <laughs> uh, so we got... Yeah, why don't we just see. Abyss Encounters? Mm, no. That wouldn't be that one anyway, because I have a lot of that. It set. could be Residents of Contrast. <laughs> Uh, could be, yeah. Why don't you figure that out while okay, I talk yeah. about what she does? Oh, nope, I found it, actually. It's a Primal Burst. Oh, the fire one. Yeah. Um, so, anyway. These are, uh, they're the monsters that kind of mill, self-mill, and then they get bonuses for doing that, or a couple of them are just powerful, um, 
and then the downside is the self milling. So uh, Celestia reads: When you tribute summon this card by tributing a light sworn monster, you can send the top four cards of your deck to your graveyard and then destroy up to two cards your opponent controls. Uh, phrased a little bit differently, but that's the effect. Uh, Twenty three hundred attack, two thousand or sorry, two hundred defense. So um, the stats aren't super good, but that ability sure is. Um, I think if there's any chance that Lightshorn kind of see play, I think there's a very good chance that this card uh, is part of that because the effect is just crazy powerful. Right. Um, the stats are good enough. They're they're right about where you'd want it to be for one tribute in attack at least. Uh, in defense, you hopefully you don't get flipped. Um, the Lightshorn before were like okay. There were there's basically just one Lila Lightshorn Sorceress that saw play. And it was uh, partially for her self-milling, partially for her ability to destroy uh, spells and traps, um, or to just kind of lock them down. So it was it was kind of a almost on the cusp, uh, but just wasn't quite good enough. And this might be enough to push them over. There's another pretty solid light sword in the set as well. So yeah, uh, I'm definitely going to experiment with it. it seems yeah. good enough to try. Um, yeah, just the description of it, I, it seems pretty good. The The part that you messed up reading, I guess, it only affects Hazy Flame, because it's a target ability. So, Hazy Flame, they're around sometimes, but most cards you can't target, so definitely don't be discouraged by it not affecting Hazy Flame cards. <laughs> hmm? Well, yeah, tar- okay. it targets two cards, so you can't target the Hazy Flames, is what I'm saying, but they're not, okay. they're not running everyone over <laughs> Right, yeah, yeah. Um, next one, Magician of Faith. Uh, this is a card that was like all over the place when I played. Um, was it for you too? I mean, it was one of the rarest cards around way back, and everyone ran it, so I guess. Yeah, but uh, back then there were just a lot of crazy powerful spells and traps. There was, um, I wrote a little list here, there was like Regeki, there was Dark. Hole, there was a Harpy's Feather Duster, Delinquent Duo, Pot of Greed, and these cards were in every single deck because they were so powerful. Uh, and there were others as well that I'm just not remembering off the top of my head. So the Magician of Faith was in turn crazy powerful because she got you back these crazy powerful cards, and then it led to cards like Nobleman of Prasa was seeing a lot of play because of it, right. and so... So you would get her, you know, she gets you back your Nobleman of Prasa too, that adds so it's a self uh uh, it fuels itself i guess i don't know unfortunately or fortunately uh for this game there aren't as many powerful the the magic cards are or spell cards are relatively much weaker Uh, we have a lot of powerful monsters and a lot of powerful traps but not really that many powerful uh spells so this uh this probably won't have nearly as big of an effect but it might be good enough that we finally start setting monsters in this game. We haven't really set monsters in this game for a long time. Yeah, outside of Sylvans. But um, yeah. yeah, the I'm trying to think about that card, Monster Reborn, Reborn. That's one spell card that came out recently, and maybe spell books. I feel like spell books could do a better job with what they have instead of using yeah. this one. Yeah, yeah, I think spell books would rather play with what they're doing already. Uh, that's a good point. To add to my list here, Monster Reborn was another one right. that was just crazy good. Uh, so, I don't know. There's, It's another card that I'll be glad to have in my collection, um, but I would not be surprised if it ends up not seeing play, even though it was one of the best cards back when I used to play. You could combo with Econ in this game. You take an Econ that you used and tribute this one to steal their monster. <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking the same thing. Um the like the most powerful cards that we have, magics are econ, um, super rush might come back a bit. Um, there's you could reuse uh, cosmic cyclones, I guess. You know, there's right. yeah. there's nothing too crazy though. I mean, you can only reuse so many cosmic cyclones. Um, econ's limited. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there's yeah, chalice is okay, but you don't want to be buffing your opponent's guys, like, that much anyway, so, I don't know. 
it's it's just significantly weaker in this game, uh, which is probably a good thing because it was weird to just have so many um, standard cards that were just in every deck. It made everything feel very samey. So I don't know. We'll see. It might see some play. Some. Uh, next, Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer. Uh, this is another card that was fairly common back when I played. Um, that's because we were in the BLS meta at the time, and it's a dark monster, and so it worked within your deck and to mess up your opponent's deck. Even then, it wasn't amazing, like the Magician of Faith is, but, or was, but, uh, it was still an okay card. Um, I should have actually read you what it did. First, four star, um, 1800 attack, 700 defense, spellcaster, sometimes that matters. And it reads, when this card inflect, inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can target up to two monsters in their graveyard, banish those cards. And then, just generally, your opponent cannot banish cards from either player's graveyard. So, um, there are actually some reasons why the banish effect, or the restriction on banishing is relevant in this game. Um, there's also, you know, conversely reasons why his battle damage of effect is relevant in this game. 1800 attack is, like, acceptable um, in this game. So all that is to say that this card is kind of decent. We've said it tons of time before. We're kind of past the time where just decent cards see play. So I think this will likely not see a lot of play unless we get more, like, BLS-type cards where you really want a dark spellcaster or unless we get more things where his uh the banish effects both of them are more impactful so i think it's kind of just below the tier where you play it but given the right meta and other cards in the meta it might end up seeing play at some point i see this as some kind of tech card like i'm trying to think about the common uh, common decks and spell books can't this would shut down spell books i think because they can't even use fate Fate would not even work. Uh, yeah, they had no, to get over him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would totally agree, except for that when you attack with him the first time, you can't attack on the first turn. So on the second turn, you attack with him, and they just get rid of him with Fate before he does anything. Oh, no, you're right. His static... Huh. His, yeah, yeah, his okay. constant ability. The right, yeah. Amazonus, they can't banish him with the Onslaught. The... Oh, no, it's Graveyard. Uh, uh, yeah, graveyard. it's only Graveyard. Yeah. Otherwise, it I agree, it'd be pretty solid. It also shuts down Celestial. Well, that's that's if they're behind. They could get Anki on. So it's 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 okay. I guess it's mostly against spellbooks that this affects. Yeah, and they ended up being less impactful in this meta than we uh, anticipated. The, la- the last so. meta might have been better, yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway. Maybe like a, a tech card or something. Right, yeah, it's kind of a tech fringe card. Um, I have a soft spot for him, just like I used to have a soft spot for uh, Parse Shaft, Parse Shaft, so I might try to play him a little more than the general community does, but anyway. Uh, next card, Thunder Seahorse. Four star, Thunder, 1600 attack, 1200 defense. Uh, you can discard this card to add two level four light Thunder type monsters of the same name with 1600 or less attack from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect once per turn, and you cannot special summon the turn you activate this effect. So, this is a tutoring and card advantage, so, very powerful effect, except that it's like super restrictive. Um, you know, level 4, 1600 attack, light, and thunder. Uh, there's not very many targets for it. And I searched for what we already have in the game, and there's essentially no targets that are even remotely relevant already in the game. So this is only for the Battery Man synergy within this set, and we've mentioned a couple times uh, we're not very impressed with the Battery Man uh, sub-think, sub-theme of this deck, so um, I don't think this card is super good now. Um, it might see some play... Uh, you know, if different cards are added. Um, the only way that I kind of see this scene some play is in a farm deck because uh, it's, you know, you get to go through your deck quickly and you can pick up Rai Mei from it. And Rai Mei has seen play in some farming decks before. So um, 
maybe. But all in all, I don't really think this is a, a card that's going to see much play. Yeah. I don't think the Hunter family even works either, right? Like the Ma Hunter and Pa Hunter and stuff like that. Uh, uh, I mean, they, no place also. <laughs> right, yeah. I was going to say, they are targets, but they're not, like, relevant because no one plays those cards. So yep. those are the other thing you could get. There's two options, two unplayable. Well, we don't know about the Battery Men, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah, we might be wrong. We, we don't know, but I don't think so. so. Nope. All right, next one. Uh, Gem Knight Lady Brilliant Diamond, which seems like one of those poorly translated things where it's just a series of words. But... Just, like the, just like the previous title of this episode. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that was the intention, yes. Um, so we've got like 10 stars here, I think. Um, Thirty. It's a fusion monster, 3,400 attack, 2,000 defense. The material for the fusion is three Gem Knight monsters. And it says... Must first be fusion summoned with the above fusion materials. You can only special summon Gem Knight Lady Brilliance Diamond uh, once per turn. Uh, and then her other effect is once per turn, you can send one face up Gem Knight monster you control to the graveyard. And if you do, special summon one Gem Knight fusion monster from your extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. So uh, basically, if you already. Uh, you can summon her from your hand because it's a fusion, and then if you have one or two guys already out, you can just make a huge board. Um, seems like some OTK potential here. Uh, a, a fairly big investment because you need the Polymorph plus three Gem Knights plus to have things already on the board, but um, it, you know, 3400 that also lets you kind of make your other guys huge by swapping them out for other giant fusions. Uh, Seems like a lot of OTK potential. I It would be even more OTK potential if she could do this during the battle phase, but I'm pretty sure you cannot just based on the normal rules of this game and, and how cards generally work. Uh, but if you can, then that's even more OTK potential, and it might be worth playing her for that. Yeah, I'm not going to pretend to know all that Gem Knights do, because I remember last time they were quite tricky. Uh, there is one fusion, I believe it's Citrine. It kind of has that uh, ancient gear slash anti magic arrow ability. So there might it goes into the one turn kill thing you mentioned. So there could be something there. I'm not sure. Yeah, and then the other thing would be if they have abilities. Um, let's see here. There's so many of them. There's so many different right, yeah. in the last set. Yeah. What? A, yeah. I was going to look through them, but probably shouldn't bother doing that live. But I'm thinking, like, if they have abilities so you can cycle through them and they have either enter the battlefield abilities right. or... Yeah, so, like, you can get the Gem Knight uh, Seraph the Knight, um, and that allows you to do an additional normal summon or set so she can kind of give you more fuel to get more of your fusion monsters after you've started the chain. So that's kind of cool. Um I don't know. There's some. There's some definitely some cool stuff you could do here. I remember the gem knights weren't quite good enough last time, um, and obviously things have, generally speaking, gotten more powerful. But actually, I think last time was around Cyber Angel, so maybe things have gotten weaker since then, and, and maybe they do have a chance. Anyway, next card is Kunai Wit Chain. Um, so you pointed out that we already have one or maybe two of these uh, from various, like, reprint I think, card box. flippers and... Oh, what's it from? Reprint box. Oh, reprint box. Oh, okay. Maybe I don't have any. Maybe someone else just <laughs> does that. Um, anyway, uh, I don't, you know, we, we know this card. It's kind of a meme a little bit. It's from the show. Uh, yeah. It's a trap card. Activate one or both of these effects simultaneously. Uh, when an opponent's monster declares an attack, target the attacking monster, change that target to defense position, and then the other ability is target one face-up monster you control, equip this card to that target, it gains 500 attack. Um, all in all, it's a okay card. Um, it's an equip that gets rid of a little bit, that mitigates the downside a little bit of equip cards, because you kind of get an effect up front, but it's already in the game, and it doesn't see any play, and, um, 
doesn't seem good enough to kind of it, like there's no reason really for it to see play so uh, it's the type of card that you'll see a lot more in kind of gold and lower and then after that probably not really see it at all yeah I saw it once during special duels that's it yeah there you go that makes sense too because you have a restricted card pool so maybe even then um all right, next one. Uh, Dust Tornado. It's another trap, and it reads, Target one spell trap card your opponent controls. Destroy that target. Then you can set one spell or trap card from your hand. Um, so there's... So, I mean, this is another kind of flavorful card, I think. It's, it, for some reason, this stands out to me as important from the show or something. Um, there's also some other specific gameplay reasons why you might play it, like Balance Math or Paleozoics. Um, I think the main use might be for farming, where you want to clear your uh, the target's back row, and then also you need to use a um, a trap on as part of your farm or something maybe. Um, but generally speaking, this is worse than the other options we have, so I don't think it'll see like widespread play. I think that it's good enough that it'll see some play, and there will be some reasons why sometimes it is the best option, but it's not going to be kind of a universal thing like some of the other ones we have. Yeah, it's better than the one where you lose 500, but it's yeah. worse than uh, Double Cyclone or Parallel Twister. So, Yeah, like, it, exactly. For the most part, worse than those. So it's like, you know, depending on what you're trying to do, you might sometimes play this. All right, uh, and the last U R is another trap, Horn of the Phantom Beast, and it reads: Target one beast or beast warrior type monster you control. Equip this card to that target. It gains 800 attack. If the equipped monster destroys your opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, draw one card. So this one, to me, it's kind of like a better version of what Kunai would change trying to do. And I actually kind of really like this one. Um, so the point is that you're playing an equip card that since you get some card advantage from it, it n negates or mitigates the downside of playing equip cards, which is that you can easily get two for one uh, with them. If your opponent does, one, does something to destroy your monster, then you also lose your equip card and you're down card advantage, and that's up. Um, so this one, you're drawing one, sometimes even two cards from it. And so it's just like you're getting all that value back. And uh, the reason why it's saying two is because if they attack into your monster because their monster is 700 stronger, and then you buff yours, your monster doesn't have to be attacking for you to get this effect. It's just any battle. So uh, you get one from their attack, and then you get to counterattack and get one that way too. And if you do that, that's just backbreaking, probably win that game. Um, I'm not sure if this is worth playing over other things like, you know, Wall of D, even Mirror Wall, which hasn't seen a ton of play recently. But, um, you know, the 800 might not be quite good enough, but people played, like, Inspiration at the time. Um, so all of those various things are to say, if there's a deck where we have Beasts or Beast Warriors kind of making a comeback... Um, I would not be surprised at all if this gets into it. It is uh, a little bit of one of those cards that is more of like a, a tempo, like play fair type card, um, as opposed to the cards where are dominating the game now by just special summoning three monsters on your first turn and beating down an OTK and all that type of stuff. Uh, so it might not quite be good enough even then, but uh, I'm excited for this card. I think there's a lot of potential here, and I think it might end up seeing play which would make it one of the very few equipped cards that do, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, this might have a home in Bujins, because everyone is a beast or beast warrior, and they play 30-card decks. So, maybe there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one might work. I was thinking also, um... Hazy? Jeez, what are they called? The, uh... No, the tag-out guys. But does it oh, work Glad, with these? Glad Beasts. Glad Beasts, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you could target the hazies is the problem. Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. I don't think you can either. I think it's no one can target them. So, Rip. Anyway, um, so that's it for the URs. All right. SRs, Megalo Smasher X, uh, Dinosaur of 2000 Attack. We saw um, 
Saber Source season play when it first came out, and that was 1900. This is a straight upgrade. The power creep goes up 50, so the last guy we saw was like a 1950, so this is 2000. Uh, I don't think it's enough to get dinosaurs back, but a four star 2300 is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, very powerful. Um, another one of those cards where it's kind of uh, asking you to play fair, where you're summoning one thing per turn and attacking, and you know, and we're we might be just completely beyond that point at this point in the game, but it's a very solid card if we are at that point in the game. Battery Man Microcell, one star, 100, 100, flip effect. Special summon one level 4 or lower battery man monster from your deck except for micro cell after this card is flipped and destroyed by battles. Draw one card. So it seems like a chase card if you're building the battery men. They try to, um, you know, replenish their hand and get stuff on the board and draw cards. And, um, you know, it's an easy target for the uh, industrial strength, I guess. It just does a lot. It's not for attacking, obviously, but it just does a lot for the deck the deck to chase i guess yeah it's like a workhorse engine type card um it's another card like the magician uh that makes you want to set cards um and lose the board for it because this dies to everything but you get a powerful effect for having done so um i guess you don't completely lose the board because you get to special summon something for it but uh i don't know uh, again, this, like you said, it's completely contingent upon whether the Battery Man is any good, which we're leaning towards no, but this is a very powerful engine if it is any good, and you would definitely play this in that deck. This would be one of the reasons to play that deck. Yes. Um, now, Doshe, Pudding Sess, 5 star, 1000, 1000, Earth Fairy. If this card in your possession is destroyed by your opponent's card, by effect or battle, it's, it's sent to the graveyard, you can shuffle it back in your deck. Uh, while you have no monsters in your graveyard, this card gains 800 attack and defense. After damage calculation, when this battles an opponent's monster, you can target one mox- one card your opponent controls and destroy that target. So this doesn't look good at all right now, but you have to look into the other Maldoshe cards they have in this set, and you'll see why you want three of this card. Uh, there's just a lot of synergy in that archetype, which we'll discuss later, but this is the chase card for that set. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I unfortunately ran out of time, so I didn't get to see all the cards in the set. So um, I'm sitting at the edge of my seat waiting to hear why this ends up being good, because I was yep. not impressed. Yep. Brother of Fire Fist Dragon. This is another archetype that is coming back. Four star, 1800, 400 Beast Warrior. Once per turn, you can activate a fire formation spell or trap, except during a damage step. If you activate it, you can set one fire formation trap directly from your deck. Once per turn, you can send two face up fire formation spells or traps you control to the graveyard. Target one fire fist in your graveyard, except for dragon and special summon it. So th- again, this is this is something you'll have to look at for the whole set. But you can tutor any trap you want, and they try to get seven. The goal is to get seven fire formations into the graveyard, uh, traps and spells. So this is this could destroy two a turn. I don't know if the archetype's going to work because it's kind of like you're sacrificing seven of your cards, which have benefits, and then you destroy them to do this big thing. That's all it's for. Yeah, um, it's it's interesting. I think it might see more play just as like as an engine outside of specifically the fire formation uh, trying to threshold thing. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. It's it's an it's one of those cards, you know, eighteen hundred attack like we just t- talked about with Kaiku, it's like close enough that you're actually considering it just as a card that you might play, as opposed to um only requiring it to be in this specific deck. Yeah. We see them kind of spread out in other uh we see Raven, I think, in uh in Hazy Flames. Another yeah. one, I forget. Yeah. Fire Formation yeah. Kyaku. Yeah. There's definitely so. a few of them that already see some play, um, and this might be another one. Or they might all, you know, the ones that are already good enough without all the synergies are obviously going to continue to be good. So, uh, you know, there's something there. Brotherhood Firefist Leopard, uh, zero attack, 200 defense. During the main phase, if this card is normal summoned or special summoned this turn, you can tribute a Firefist monster 
set one fire formation spell or trap directly from your deck. So typically you want to sacrifice this guy because you don't want a zero attack on the board. And basically it gets, it's a combo piece. You could use dragon to get leopard and you use leopard to get a spell or trap like fire formation Gyaku from your deck and lock down their board. So this is a combo piece. Yeah, definitely. The Soul of Purity and Light, 2,000, 1,800, 6 Star Fairy. This cannot be normal summoned or set. You can only special summon it by removing from play two light monsters in your graveyard. All monsters your, your opponent controls lose 300 attack during their battle phase only. So this is a free card. Um, you take out two guys in your graveyard, banish them, and get a free 2,000. And, yeah, we saw some cards like this previously, like the Rock Spirit or stuff like that. Yeah, it's... I'm not very excited by it, which is interesting because I'm generally excited by graveyard cards, but um, it it could see play. I mean, a free 2,000 attacker is not bad. Uh, the debuff to your opponent's monsters is okay, so maybe. Gilosaurus, 3-star, 1,400, 400 dinosaur. You can special, this card, special summon this card from your hand. If special summoned this way, you can activate this effect. Your opponent can special summon one monster from their graveyard. So this is a lot like the card Dianterium. Uh, and if you have one or two of these, you can special summon them onto the board from your opening hand and then ramp tribute a one or two star monster. I mean, one or two tribute monster. Yeah, this might be one of the most impactful cards uh, from the set. And if we didn't already have the Dianterium, then it would definitely be one of the most impactful cards from the set. Um, card... Uh, Decks like Hazy Flame just really need to kind of ramp that first turn, and uh, so do there's a couple other decks as well that could use that, like Monarchs and stuff that aren't as prevalent. So um, this is a good solid card. Yeah. Uh, Evocator Chevalier, four star Warrior Gemini of nineteen hundred nine hundred. Uh, like a Gemini, it's a normal until you activate its ability, so it's like two summons. You can send one face-up equip you control to the graveyard, target one card your opponent controls, and destroy it. It's kind of like a Noble Knight card. It's kind of exactly the same. Um, you could use, like, Supervisor, Big Bang Shot, or you could fit it with the Noble Knight uh, Swords, which come back. Yeah, yeah, I kind of like it. Uh, we haven't seen Supervise for a while, but it's a really powerful card. It's another one of the very few equips that are actually worth playing. Uh, so this might be kind of part of that as a bit of a combo thing. Curse of Dragonfire, this is a reprint card, 5 star, 200, 1500. When it's summoned, you can target one field spell and destroy it. You can use it as a fusion material, which is kind of weird, but it's not playable because it's got like 4 star stats and fields are not really played right now. So, Yep, agreed. It doesn't see play and it won't see play. Treasure Panda, 4 star beast, 8, 1100, 2000. You can banish up to 3 spells or traps in your from your graveyard face down. Special summon one mo normal monster from your deck whose level equals the number of cards banished to activate this effect. This is kind of like uh, Shine Ball Venus, where you could bring back like an Ojama or a Mystic Shine Ball, stuff like that, and use Order to Charge. Yeah, it doesn't seem very good to me. It's like really slow and, uh, and intensive because you need to have a spell or trap for each level. So, I, so you need like two or three. I mean, I guess you, there's a couple one, like you said, the Shine Balls, but I don't know. Also, this guy has low attack, so you'd need to, like, set it and then let it uh, get attacked into or something. I don't know. I don't, I don't like it. Sky Galloping Gaia, the Dragon Champion, another reprint card. You fuse Gaia, the Fierce Knight, any Gaia monster in a dragon, 26-21. Uh, you can add one Spiral Spear Strike from your deck to your graveyard, or graveyard to your hand. When it declares an attack on a monster, you can change their battle position. It does a lot, but it dies to effect damage, banish, banish effects, stuff like that. It's not enough. Yeah, uh, almost certainly not enough. I actually have seen this see a little bit of play. <laughs> um, yeah, when it first came out, yeah. Yeah, when it first came out, so I it might make a comeback now that more people have access to it. Um, but probably not a huge comeback. It it probably at most just see a little bit of fringe play again. If I open them, I will probably try it out because I didn't have it when it first came out, so I never got a chance to try it out. And it was kind of fun looking. 
I think I have Curse of Dragonfire. I'm not sure if I have this guy. I definitely yeah. got a few of these. Yeah. And Gem Knight Fusion. A normal spell. Fusion summon one Gem Knight monster from your extra deck using cards from your hand or side of the field, which is basically polymerization. If this card is in your graveyard, you can banish one Gem Knight from your graveyard and add it to your hand. So, Gem Knights do a lot of stuff in the graveyard. I'm not going to pretend to know what they do, but this is a special polymerization for that deck. Yeah, and the upside is that you are essentially um, reducing one card cost off of polymerization because you use this effect and you have to pitch a couple of Gemini, uh, or sorry, Gemini monsters to polymerize whatever you're doing. And then, so you are instantly have something in the graveyard so that you can get this back for your next one. So uh, basically it's kind of just reducing the cost of playing a polymerization uh, by one. So that's, in a deck where you need to do that, very solid. This will definitely see play in that deck. Yep. All right. Let's go over the archetypes broadly. And the one that I liked the most was the Maldoshes, actually. Yeah, tell us why you thought that card that didn't seem that good is actually pretty good. Yeah. So their whole goal is to send all of their cards back into the deck and have no monsters in the graveyard. That's kind of their goal. So it would help if I know the rarity of these cards, but Maldoshe Chateau is a field spell. Basically, when you play it, you bring all your Maldoshes back into your deck. They gain 500 attack and defense. If if a monster in your graveyard will be returned to the deck by the effect of a Maldoshe monster, you return it to your hand. So this is a hard reset to their goal of having no monsters in the graveyard. And the reason you want that is because of Maldoshe T-Break and Maldoshe Knights. So these are N rarity cards. Maldoshe T break. Counter trap. When a trap when a spell or trap is activated and you if you have no monsters in your graveyard, negate the activation. And if you do return it to the hand. So you I believe you return the opponent's card back to their hand. Then if you control a face up Maldoshe putting Cess, destroy one card your opponent controls. Mm. Maldoshe Knights. When a monster counter trap, when a monster effect is activated, and if you have no monsters in your graveyard, negate the activation. Then, if you control Maldoshe Pudding Cess, shuffle one random card from your opponent's hand into the deck. So these cool. two counter anything, I guess. Uh, and then, if you have the Pudding Cess out, you do additional things. Yeah, the tea break is interesting. Uh... Because you give it back to them. So it's like, that only counters certain things. Uh, it counters like traps pretty well because then they have to reset and do it right. again for another turn. But if they're just playing like a normal uh, spell or a quick play on their turn, then it's like, okay, whatever. Um, so that's interesting. But you get that destroy anyway. So you do get some value out of it. Yeah. And then, uh, like you said, the other one seems really powerful as well. We don't have very many discard effects. This is a pseudo discard effect, so that's kind of cool. There is Maldoshe Ticket and another card I can't pronounce. Uh, the cat, uh, Mew Few. I I don't know, <laughs> but basically they they get to cheat out the five star. So with those, you can get the pudding cess on the board immediately. Um, Broke. Lesson. Mm. Lesson. Maldoshe Lesson. Where is this card? Trap card. Target one Maldoshe monster in your graveyard, shuffle that into your deck. So it's, this kind of activates the trap cards in the event you have one of them in the graveyard. They all gain 800 attack and defense. All Maldoshe monsters gain 800 attack and defense uh, permanently, I believe. And then you can shuffle one other monster from your graveyard into the deck. So you could bring two of them back. One or two back, and then they all gain 800, and def 800 attack and defense permanently. So, nice. A lot going on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's interesting because it's not a continuous trap. So I don't know about that 800. It, it doesn't I say guess... at the, until the end of the turn, so I assume yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. yeah, I think you're right. It says the ones you currently control, so I think you just buff yeah. those ones. So. And they're pretty weak, so you definitely want the <laughs> permanent. Yeah. Yeah. So I see them as a as a new control deck. 
you just need the pudding sets, three of those, and you're good to go. Yeah, it sounds really annoying, so that's exactly what control decks are in this game. Just annoy your opponent until they concede. Yeah, it's it's anti deck out. Like they they ne- they they're never gonna deck out because they keep returning their stuff, and you're gonna draw your cards. So that's what it does. Yep, there you go. Battery men. So there is solar, which I like. Solar is a rare. Um, fifteen hundred, I believe. Fifteen fifteen. When it's normal summon or special summon, you can send one thunder from your deck to the graveyard. So this accomplishes the goal of the industrial strength. You put stuff in the graveyard. Yep. Uh, it makes counters. So whenever you play another thunder, you could get a counter, a token, I believe. I, I mean, and it copies the name of another monster. So the Battery Man AA, a uh, double A, I mean, they, <laughs> for each card of the name, they gain a thousand attack and defense. So you have two, they become two thousand, two thousands. And the solar counts as one of them. So. There's some synergy there. Yeah, there you go. I wasn't super impressed with the uh, attacking with the double A, but um, yeah, that's a cool little synergy thing too. I do think the putting stuff in your graveyard is pretty solid. Um, I'm I'm still not sold though. (laughs) I think it makes more sense to kind of do it all in one batch maybe, or I don't know. It's interesting. Super Electromagnetic Voltic Dragon, 5-star. It gets an ability depending on which card you tribute, but if you tribute an AA, it's a 1-tribute 3,400. Yeah. <laughs> That's something. Yep. Yeah, it is. And it also works with the uh, solar as well, right? You can make it become whichever right. of these you need. So that's kind of cool. And Battery Charger. You could basically bring back any Battery Man for 500 life points. Very good, good, especially when you need to do, like, uh, tributes and stuff, so... Yep. Those are ones I liked. Yeah, yeah, that seems good. Um, I don't really have anything to add on those. Like I said, I kind of ran out of time to look through the rest, so we'll have to see if there's anything cool once it all comes out. Uh, Gem Knights, there's a bunch of resurrection stuff going on. This guy looks like he's dancing as Alexandrite. Yeah. Uh, Tribute it. Special summon one Gem Knight normal monster from your deck. The other one is Obsidian. If this is sent from your hand to the graveyard, which is basically uh, polymerization, you can target one level four or lower normal in your graveyard and special summon it. So it gives you extra stuff to polymerize again. Uh, And a bunch of them are normal, so that makes sense. Right, yeah. Lapis Lazuli. This is a burn card. It... Uh, once per turn, you can send one Gem Knight from your deck to the graveyard. It flips 500 for each special summoned monster on the field, so that includes all of your opponents for hires. Uh, all right. This is like a different strategy. The a yeah. strategy. It so can be I'd... quite annoying. It's only once per turn, though, but it could be like 1,500, 2,000 each time because it counts yeah. itself. Yeah. Right, yeah. That's interesting. Um, gem enhancement. I also liked. It's like mask change. Where is this card? Getting confused. <laughs> uh, here we go. It's an end trap, and it reads: tribute one gem knight monster to target one gem knight monster in the graveyard. Or sorry, tribute one gem knight monster, comma. Then target one Gem Knight monster in the graveyard. Special summon that target from the graveyard. Um, that yep. wording makes me think you can hit yourself. Does that work? To just kind of well, refresh your attack? Yeah, you get another attack, basically. Like, I think yeah. it's like a mass change, pretty much. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yep. So we'll I see like where it. those go. Yeah, I mean, it's a trap. Uh, which I remember now from the first time we had Gem Knights, there was kind of that situation as well where there was some OTK potential, but you had to set it up the turn before because it it required some trap action. So this kind of perpetuates that same problem. But we're getting a lot of pieces here. And once you kind of hit that critical mass, you're like, okay, are we there yet? Um, Because this is just another way to, to maybe get there for that OTK. 
fire formations. We don't know if this is going to work out. But their goal is to use the card Ultimate Fire Formation Seto. It's not Seto Kai, but it's uh, so, something similar. But trap one, uh, normal trap, banish seven fire formation spells or traps in your graveyard. Special summon as many Fire Fist monsters as possible from your graveyard. You only have three zones, so max three. Um, then yeah. you can set fire formation spells directly from your deck, except for this one. Up to the number of monsters special summoned by this effect. So if you get seven in the graveyard, you're going to get basically one turn kill your opponent. And you could just put Fire Formation Gyakus on the board and win. But seven is a lot. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Because if you think about it, you need seven plus three so that you get any benefit from this uh, spells and traps. So that's at least 11 because you need to actually play this card too. And then you need at least three uh, of the monsters so that you get any benefit from playing this card. So you've already filled up 14 cards of your <laughs> deck uh, just so that this one card, and if you're running multiple copies, of course, you get 15, 16 cards are filled from your deck just to make this card have any value, um, which is kind of, obviously, that's a pretty big ask when you're running 20 to 30 card decks. So Right. It all works against its favor. Yeah. The snake. Snake I like. 1800. Uh, I'm not going to read its abilities, but you could basically send two again. Two, It's kind of like the SR where you can send two of them, and you get to draw a card. Rhino is a protection card. It makes your guys stronger. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't really have anything to add on those. So. Yep. Lavals. Lavals are the R and N only group, so it's unlikely they're good. <laughs> typically typically you have like a SR if the if the archetype's good. Yeah. They're pretty boring. Honestly, they just they they are a milling not a milling, they are like a graveyard deck, so they gain abilities based off the graveyard. So Yeah. Let's see. Laval Burner. Five star twenty one hundred. You have three or more lavals with different names, you can special summon it, so it's a different it's pretty easy to get three. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not, I'm there's not a, impressed with this. There's a four star twenty one hundred attacker, but we were just talking about how twenty three hundred attacker with uh with dinos is probably not yeah. enough to bring them back. So it's kind of like whatever. Lava blaster. This is kind of like uh, Komashrumo. So it's like four star twelve hundred. When this card is normal summoned, if you have a lava monster in your graveyard other than this one, you could choose a number from one to five. <laughs> Then send that many cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard. This card gains 200 attack for each lava monster. Sent to the graveyard from that ability. So it's like, yeah, they do the same thing where they kind of need grass. Like something to excavate, and then they gain extra attack. But they're only attacking, that's all they do. That's all their abilities are just gain attack. So that's not enough. Right, yeah. At this point in the game, we need more than that. You need to kind of control the board and stuff. So, okay. Yep. Not much to say about them. Yeah. And the elemental heroes are back. So they're they kinda have their other fusions that you never saw before. Uh Rampart Blaster or this gets the attack when it's in defense mode. So it's a twenty five hundred defense and it gets to hit directly for a thousand. Yeah, I thought that was kinda cool. Yeah. I don't I don't know if it's particularly good, but it was kinda cool. Yeah. Wild Wingman is kind of like a uh, Snipe Hunter. You could discard a card each, like as many as you want, to destroy back row, but it's kind of weak, so that's the trade off. Yeah. Fifth hope, you could draw two or three cards, but you have to have five elemental heroes in your graveyard, I believe. Yeah, hero signal that helps them fuse. Not much to say. Yeah, um, the only one I want to add is. Um... It doesn't get its own little category, but the wolf, the light sworn beast, uh, you right. pointed out, uh, that that goes with the light sworn that we talked about before. It's a four star uh, light beast warrior, twenty one hundred attack, three hundred defense, and it reads: cannot be normal summoned or set, must be special summoned by a card effect. Uh, and then it reads: if this card is sent from the from your deck to the graveyard, special summon it. So. Uh, like we talked about, the Light Sworn like to self-mill, 
So it seems like there's going to be a good amount of, of chances for this guy to just get instantly summoned to the board. Um, some of the Light Sworn... <laughs> yeah. Some of the Light Sworn uh, do it like at the end of your turn, so you don't get an immediate value, but some of them do it right away. So um, you can, you know get these extra just attackers that people didn't really uh, plan for. And it uh, seems pretty solid, a free 2100. Sounds like Sylvan's all over again. If they're back-to-back -back and you play Celestia, it's game over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, you can you could definitely get some OTKs from it. or It's just, like, card advantage because the, the milling, self-milling is kind of almost neutral it's um usually costed like a little bit of a benefit um some of the times though it's costed as a negative and then this gives you an advantage from it so it's kind of cool yep so this is a pretty cool box overall and deck tech will be buying a lot of it i will buy a little of it and that is it <laughs> yep all right we're going pretty long so why don't we uh go through the rest of the stuff cyrus is back he's got two new cards Armoroid, it's finally a win condition for Roids. 8 star 2700, if this card's tribute summoned with at least one Roid monster, banish all spells and traps on the field. So build yeah. those Cyrus decks. This is a win condition, but hard to do. Yeah, you still need some Roids on the field already, so... Eh. Decoy Roid, they have to attack it. That's basically all it does. <laughs> they can't attack any other guy except for this one. Yeah. Um... Ranked Duels update. So Ranked Duels are extended five days into August. That's important to note. So you have five extra days to get King of Games. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. They said that that's to do with the, uh, the what is World, it, champs. The World Champs. Yeah, so that's interesting. Uh, just keep it in mind. Fiendish Engine Omega. 8 star 2800. Special summon an engine token each turn. I mean, during the end phase. If you had, if you can have this card gain 100 attack until the end phase. During the end phase, if this effect was used, destroy it. So maybe you could chalice it and keep it on the board, but it's an engine with no archetype. Mm -hmm. Made of the Aqua, 4 star, 700, 2000. As long as this card is on the field, the field is treated as Umi, though there's no attack or defense buff from the field. Yeah, that's all it does. Huh. You can play Sea Stealth with someone other than Mako, the trick your opponent. Yeah. Like see this card yeah, just to mess with them. That's that's kind of interesting. Something, yeah. Uh, yeah. Energy Bravery, 4 star, 1700, 1200. Mm -hmm. Gemini monsters you control that are treated as effect monsters cannot be destroyed by card effects. So you, don't, you typically don't run like a Gemini only deck, and uh, it's kind of like extra for that. Yeah. Um, the Gemini, like, you need to have already summoned them, so that's yeah. kind of like, you're assuming something like three turns, <laughs> uh, which is a bit of an assumption in this game. So, I don't know if this is like, if, if you'll ever really be in situations where you would get any benefit from this. Right. Yeah. And finally, card trader stock. New cards... Light Ray Medor, 6 star, 1200, 3000. If three or more of your Light Moxers are banished, you can special summon this from your hand. Uh, once returned, this card cannot be destroyed by battle. So this is very sticky, assuming there are no banished effects running around. And this has some synergy with things like uh, the Soul of Purity and Light, where you could get two two cards banished. Yeah, yeah there you go, that's kind of cool. Dawnbreak Garden is horrible. <laughs> you basically need to Gemini summon it to get 2300 defense, so two turns set up for 2300 defense. Yeah, and that's not particularly good. Doppelganger, trap, continuous trap. When you take damage from the effect of an opponent's monster, inflict the same damage to your opponent. So it's like a burn card, but it's only for monsters. Anti burn card, I mean. Yeah, I mean, there that can sometimes be relevant. <laughs> it's the counter to the Lapis Lazuli basically what it's for yeah or yeah so it doesn't negate the damage so i guess it's not that good but in like a really close game with lava golems or whatever you know right. or something there too or 
a um, geez, what's it called? The Amazon is. It doesn't work. That's battle damage, I think. But it's by effect. The um, it's effect the damage. Swordswoman. I thought it was battle damage. I thought it was battle damage. I don't know. That's interesting. Like redirected battle damage. I don't know. Okay. I'm not sure, so I won't comment. <laughs> Let's figure it out. Yeah. Uh, your opponent takes battle damage. Oh, okay. Uh, cool. I, I'm not sure, but we, we'll say it doesn't work for now. Yeah. Maybe it I, does. I think you're right, because they call it battle damage. So we are done today. You're going to get your Kribo soon, so you can pick whichever five Kribos you want. Which one? No, the five. Um, so we're going to wrap up today. Shout out and much love to Grand Harrier for coming back to Patreon. Thank you very much for the support. Yep. Yeah, we love to, um, you know, we like to shout out everyone who supports us on Patreon. We really appreciate it, um, supporting us for what, you know, we like to do. And, uh, and we love to see people coming back too. So that's great. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. So that's us. That's it uh, for us again. Hopefully the, the, uh, issue last week with the episode not loading to Wednesday has been resolved. So uh, hopefully this episode will come out immediately after we push it out. You can listen to it and subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, YouTube, and many other sources. Check out the podcast and more at our website, thedualassessment.wordpress.com, Facebook, facebook.com slash thedualassessment. If you want to support us, patreon.com slash dual slash dual underscore assessment. Email us with any questions at the dual assessment at gmail.com or Twitter, dual underscore assessment, me at Green Ranger CCG, Deck Tech and HS Deck Tech. Yep, we love to hear from you guys, and we'll see you guys next time. All right, see you guys.